On today's edition of Dolphins Today, we're breaking down my perfect free agency plan for Miami with free agency set to begin in just a few days. Now, I will make note, I am, I am operating within the confines of the salary cap here, or at least the uh, loose confines of the salary cap. So it's not as aggressive as the Dolphins may have been in the past. It's not all super big name players. I spent some decent money, but I'm not going extreme unrealistic in my plan. Now, let's pretend you're GM Chris Greer. If you could make one move this offseason, what would it be? We'll make this the pinned comment here on YouTube, so think about it if you need to, but head down there and let me know. All right, step number one, and this is the most important part for free agency, I still got to free up some salary cap space. Right now, Miami is almost $20 million as of filming over the salary cap, give or take. Here are some moves I can make to free up even more money. I'm going to cut Jeff Wilson Jr. I can save $3 million. I like the player. I don't need to pay that much for my number three back. I'm going to restructure Tyreek Hill. I am down with an extension, but with the cap or the season just around the corner, the offseason, I should say, for agency beginning, I'm going to take the shorter, quicker route to restructure. Extension works about the same. I save 12.5. Defensively, I'm going to save $2.5 million by, re- by cutting linebacker Duke Riley. Uh, I will need that money to address that position in free agency, by the way. I'm going to restructure Jalen Ramsey and Bradley Chubb. Those two moves alone free up a massive amount of salary cap space. Nearly $19 million and over $14 million. And I will restructure defensive lineman Zach Sealer at 5.63. In total, that saves over $56 million in salary cap space with Six fairly easy moves that make sense. Now I've got $37 million, give or take, to spend in free agency. And I've not touched the Tua contract, which gives you the flexibility to do whatever it is you're going to do there later on in the offseason. So let's begin with some re-signings of players. That is step number two here. I'm going to bring back some notable players who I think will be relatively affordable and not cut too much into my salary cap space. Andrew Van Ginkle, I think he'll be pretty affordable as that edge linebacker piece. Connor Williams, I am going to bring him back on a cheap one-year deal, give him time to recover and grow and develop uh, and continue to be a good starting center for me. Plus, I think the injury makes him a discount player. I'll bring back Deshaun Elliott. Good safety class. Shouldn't be so expensive. Robert Jones is also a restricted free agent. I think he'll be pretty darn cheap. This doesn't really cut that much into my uh, my pool of money to spend. A couple of those guys won't be that much more than the vet minimum, I wouldn't think. Now, when the Dolphins make moves, we will have videos for you, so make sure you guys are subscribed. Don't miss out. Hit that sub button for me right now, youtube.com slash Dolphins News. I'm going to spend a lot of my money on getting a player I think Anthony Weaver, my defensive coordinator, would really appreciate having. Let's bring in linebacker Patrick Queen. I have David Long as one starter. I'm going to go ahead and move on from Duke Riley and plug in Patrick Queen at the inside linebacker two spot. And I'll probably consider drafting somebody as well to pair with Channing Tindall, uh, who may or may not end up making this roster. I don't think it's just the presence of Mike McDonald or just the presence of Roquan Smith that has led to consistent, steady growth over the years out of Patrick Queen. Now, I don't think he's... I've seen people throw throw around $20 million dollars I don't think he's actually going to be be that expensive. And in general, when it comes to the salary cap, in terms of the hit, think of the average per year figure being about half of what you pay that guy for year one. So let's say it's, you know, 18, 16 million dollars. You're probably only paying half of that on your salary cap hit in year one. I, I think that linebacker is an area this team is going to need to be better at. You've already moved on from Jerome Baker. I think you can have a relatively similar year one cap hit even if you spend big money on Patrick Queen. So it's a bit of a more aggressive, different style, but I am getting one of the top defensive players out there on the open market. On step number four, I'm going to try a buy low piece along the offensive line. Look, offensive linemen are expensive, or at least the good ones. Lincoln Tomlinson is not coming off a good year, but I also know his best years came with Mike McDaniel in San Francisco. 
So I'm banking on a cheap one-year, nearly veteran minimum deal to give myself some added depth along the offensive line. A player who I think fits the scheme for what the, the Dolphins are going to what to do. And I can plug him in as a piece at left guard. I can try to develop Robert Jones and Lester Cotton if we still want to try that. Uh, you know, Liam Eikenberg is, eh, you know, he's, he's Liam Eikenberg, I suppose. And I can draft somebody too. I think there will be a good interior piece along the offensive line to consider drafting in round one, round two. Maybe someone like a Graham Barton makes sense. He could play left guard or center for me. Tomlinson fills the immediate stopgap as best as possible, but does not preclude an upgrade later in the draft. Now, step number five is bulking up the interior of the defensive line. I, I really thought about putting Christian Wilkins on here. I just think he's going to command... 25 something million dollars per year and that's just going to be too much relative to what I think this team is going to be willing to pay so I'm trying to keep it somewhat realistic and, and I just I just don't think it's going to happen which makes my interior of the defensive line room kind of thin you know Zach Sealer's back Raekwon Davis is a free agent Christian Wilkins is a free agent I think both those guys have a very real chance of leaving so instead of dropping a bag on Christian Wilkins I'm going to sign two players for the same price and frankly, a little bit less. We'll break down those two players here in a moment, but today's show is made possible by Game Time. You might be worried about the, Dol the Dolphins offseason, understandably so. It's a precarious situation and you got to have some more playoff success. We all know that. But you shouldn't have to worry about tickets to your next big event. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. They have deals on tickets up to the start of the event, even an hour after it begins, plus flash deals, zone deals, sponsor deals, and more to help you save even more money. So download the Game Time app today, create your account, and use code FINSCHAT for 20 bucks off your first purchase. That's P-H-I-N-S-C-H-A-T for $20 off. Link will be in the comment section and the description of today's show. That's promo code FINSCHAT over at GameTime.co. All right, on to the interior defensive line signings here. I'm going to go with Grover Stewart, the defensive tackle, more of a nose guard style from the Colts, and also Sheldon Rankins of the Houston Texans. Stewart's numbers dipped this year. He got suspended for a couple of games. But if you're looking for an upgraded nose guard, I think Grover Stewart is a much better football player than what we saw mostly out of Raekwon Davis. And you're going to need to get some more run stoppers in there along your defensive line. I think Stewart's going to have a fairly decent market. Uh, but again, we're talking like average per year, far less than what Christian Wilkins was going to make. Sheldon Rankins fits more of that three technique mold, you know, more of that pass rushing defensive tackle. Had a big step forward this year under D'Amico Ryans, who of course knows Mike McDaniel very well. Uh, I actually, strangely enough, uh, if you went down this path, decent chance you're just swapping defensive tackles with Houston. Like I wouldn't be shocked at all if Christian Wilkins ended up with the Texans there. So I'm not, it's not Wilkins. I know that's disappointing, but I've got two players who can start for me up front. As we sit right now, just before the start of free agency, what is the biggest position of need for the Miami Dolphins? Go ahead and sound off in the comments section. Step six, I'm going to upgrade my wide receiver three spot with an old buddy. Let's bring back Trent Sherfield because he didn't play very well for the Bills and not nearly as well as he did in Miami. Look at the number difference here. And maybe this is a credit to the coaching staff and or maybe it's the quarterback too. Uh, 417 yards in 2022, 86 yards in 2023, massive fall-offs there across the board. The, the Cowboys have pieces, or the, the Dolphins, excuse me, as I look at Cedric Wilson, a former Cowboy, the Dolphins have pieces along the wide receiving core. They have Tyreek Hill. They have Jalen Waddell. Beyond that, a lot of free agents, a lot of uncertainty. Adding a cheap veteran wide receiver, I think makes a ton of sense. Step seven. How about you bring back another guy who knows, or bring in another guy who knows Anthony McDonald, or Anthony Weaver, excuse me, as I merge my coaches. That's Ronald Darby, the cornerback, who had, I thought, 
one of his best years in a long time with the Ravens, which is probably a testament to their coaching staff there after kind of flaming out in Denver. I don't want to overspend at corner. That's a reason why you you moved on uh, from Xavier Howard. You have Jalen Ramsey. Obviously, he's not going anywhere. Cater Kohu, I think, can still be a good nickel corner for you. I'm not going to bring back Eli Apple. I'm going to let, let him walk. I don't want to totally block out Cam Smith. He spent a second-round pick on Cam Smith. He needs to be a piece. But I do want some insurance. I don't think Ronald Darby would be that expensive. So whether he's CB3 or CB4, I think that makes a lot. I think that's a good fit for the Dolphins. One more name that I know my boy Will Scott's going to love. Jordan Poyer, recently cut by the Buffalo Bills. Poyer's numbers actually looked pretty decent last year. They were by no means bad. The Bills are really cutting some salary. I mean, they, they cut guys even like, uh, uh, like Trey White. Uh, I know there's some, some injury concerns uh, on that front there. But moving on from Jordan Poyer, they get younger in the s- secondary. You add a piece at safety for a team that I think is going to play more three safety looks. The Ravens have done that in the past. Now your, your secondary is in pretty darn good shape. You have Jalen Ramsey, you have Cater Kohu, you have Ronald Darby, or Cam Smith, Jordan Poyer, and or Deshaun Elliott, and Javon Holland in there. It's strong safety. You could do some free safety stuff, do some fun split safety looks. You got some flexibility there. And it allows you to focus your draft picks, not so much on the secondary, because you've spent some good capital on there. You don't always want to overinvest in that one area. And you can draft some more offensive linemen. You can draft some front seven players. You can see who falls to you. And you're, for the most part, filling your needs, allowing yourself to go BPA with a, with a tinge of focus towards the offensive line. So one, one more time, my plan. I'm going to free up cap space. That is something we will all agree on. <laughs> Has to be done, and even if you don't like my individual moves, you'll at least agree with that part. You're going to re-sign some key players. I'm going to add, be aggressive and add Patrick Queen to my linebacking core. I'm going to go with a cheap player who fits the scheme and Lake and Tomlinson on the offensive line. I'm going to sign two defensive tackles in Grover Stewart and Sheldon Rankins. Spring back Trent Sherfield, add Ronald Darby, and then get Jordan Poyer finally to Miami. So grade my realistic Dolphins plan for free agency. A, B, C, D, or F in the comments section.